the warlord Ignacio de Loyola, coming from high Spanish nobility, was confined to the sickbed by a serious war injury. During his long and very painful healing process, he studied a book about the life of Christ. Based on this deep experience, he decided to pursue a new path in his life, that of a saintly pilgrim. with the symbolic weapons of our Lord, he stays a saint and healer in service in the name of humanity. He strived for inner consolation, which can only be found in God. After handing over his worldly wealth to a beggar, he began his way to the monastery of Montserrat. He devoted his whole life to the way of the Lord, to everyone, and to himself. To feel the guidance of God. As a sign of his faith and his full renunciation of his former life, he laid down his sword at the altar of the Holy Virgin. Might it be that Ignacio de Loyola still heals and helps in spiritual form through the healer Chihuahua de Deus? She says that there are rumors that an airplane in which he was flying had crashed and that this was an act of sabotage to get him out of the way. There are many such conspiracy theories. For her, Joao de Deus is a god who healed her. About what I have to say is my favorite subject, Medium João and Don Inácio, and this extraordinary phalange of helping spirits, this group consciousness that works through John of God. This extraordinary man who has uh, comes from a very, very humble background and who has devoted his life to serving humanity, to serving God with extraordinary compassion, humility, and devoted to serving his mission. We have the topmost world-class capable medium in Medium Joao.
They don't do magic, they do healings. Some people just can't believe they can have be cut on and not have pain. Stop it up. Everyone who comes receives a healing spiritually, which is a healing for the mind, body, and soul. They receive that without even knowing. Channeling means to allow a spirit who has passed on to use your body, your consciousness, to come through to communicate a message. It is a lot of work for a spirit to come into a man's body because that's where he incorporates like a body of another man inside him to actually give out this love and divine help. Our being is not this physical body. It's an energy. And this energy goes beyond all time, all space, and all substance. What we do here is energy work. <laughs> Light work. What I found out is that there's a lot, maybe more than 50% that you have to do yourself. Que Deus cura. Deus é caminho, está na vida, no amor, na verdade, no carinho. I have immense respect for him as a man and immense respect for him as the healer that he is. And of course, immense gratitude and respect for the entities of light who work through his body, through his instrument to create healing to help us emotionally, to guide us, to open our hearts so that we can be more compassionate and loving people. We are all individuals and we are all different. We all have different cultural backgrounds, different spiritual backgrounds based on what our families taught us. And we all have different ways of thinking and we are all polluting our bodies the spiritual body as well as the physical body. And as a result of this pollution from our ways of thinking and behaviors and attitudes and all of that, it's not easy to heal some people as fast, as easily as it is to heal others. Some people need extra work, they need extra time. early 19th century, there was a French philosopher whose name was Kardec, and he introduced a movement, which is a religious movement called Spiritism. An element of Spiritism is a person to be able to communicate with someone who has passed away, someone who is no longer in physical body. The most recent entities that work through Medium Joy were once healers, they were once doctors, they were priests. They're very familiar with spiritual disease, with emotional disease, with physical disease. So they come through his consciousness to deliver a message unique to you. They're capable of scanning you and kind of like taking an x-ray of your spirit. They know everything that's going on with you. Before I even think of my question to talk to the entities about, they're already calculating the answer. They know what I'm coming with.
Eu sou de berço católico. I was raised as a Catholic. The question that I always ask myself is the question of the divine universe. Then I surrender myself. The entities come. And I fall asleep. Eu tinha vontade de ser consciente, porque eu ficava sabendo da vida de todos. I would like to be conscious. Mas eu sou inconsciente. Then I would be able to tell a lot of stories about many lives. É Deus e os bons espíritos. The truth is that God works for me. I'm asleep during the process and the good entities work through me. Dorothy, she's from Germany. She's been in a wheelchair for 15 years. She came here this time. Now she doesn't need the wheelchair. Her first time in 15 years, she can walk. And that's an absolute miracle. And she knows this is the biggest miracle of her life. So I've seen a lot of different miracles happen here. It's like nearly every day. My name is Sakha Musavi, and I live in Iran. I came here to be operated on. I let myself be operated on publicly so that people can see that it is painless and in order to encourage others to come here and let themselves be healed. During the operation, I felt the incision, but I felt no pain. And I noticed that not only John of God, but also entities were working on me. These entities do the operations, not John of God. I felt the presence of the entities which was very calming for me. Twenty-four hours have passed since the operation. I feel well, and it is marvelous how quickly the wound has healed. I did not experience any pain. My illness is healed. Everything has gone. My name is Dr. Rick Sheff. I'm a physician. My background includes that I did my undergraduate work at Cornell University. I studied philosophy and politics at Oxford University. I went to medical school at the University of Pennsylvania and did my family medicine residency at Brown University. I work with hospitals and physician leaders from all across the United States on the challenges we face in healthcare today. I've come to Abhijanya, to the Casa, to experience what is here. I consider myself a scientist and a skeptic. I'm not only skeptical of what might be going on here in Abhijanya, but also of what we believe conventional science teaches us. I would like to share some thoughts about the physical surgeries. Frankly, they get a lot of sensationalism and attention. In my experience, they are a tiny portion of what's really going on here at the Casa and the work of John of God. They do force us to rethink how the world works. I have stood inches away from an eye scraping surgery that I cannot explain. Yes, I might be able to come up with a, a rationalization using the language of hypnosis and post-hypnotic suggestion as to how someone could have anesthesia. Maybe even how they might not have pain after having the kind of scraping to an eye that would cause a corneal abrasion that would cause us to shriek in pain for days. We don't see that. But I can't explain why there isn't an infection. Why the nose surgeries don't create infections. Those are mysteries to me. These physical surgeries are very rare compared to the other healings that are going on. 
on an energetic level. There is no need for a physical surgery. A thousand or more people may come through the casa in any given day. They are having physical healings that cannot be explained away. Instead, it's the healing, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that have now come through this experience. And that happens for decades. And I've personally had a healing here. I've had multiple healings. I have prayed for healing for my son. And even before I left here, the first time I came to Abhijanya, I witnessed that healing begin in my son who was thousands of miles away. And I can't explain that but I am deeply, deeply grateful for it. Dr. Augusto of Almeida. He is the one that says, in his phalange, in his group consciousness, there are not 10, there are not 100, but there are thousands. And he is the one that goes to the very depths of the abyss to rescue one soul. Don Inácio, he was, of course, started the Jesuit movement, and he is a very enlightened being. Saint Ignatius, while he was incorporated, he limps because he had his knee shot with cannonball at that time. And then he came in, he can't stay in the body for a very long time because he's such an evolved spirit, such a huge energy. And you can see that Medium Jean's body actually expands. His eyes change, the size of his eyes is just huge. Dr. Augusto came through. Now the other entity comes through very quickly. It's seamless, just gently drops through. And Dr. Augusto said, that there would be very few mediums that could hold Don Inácio's light. To be witness to such a really an intimate experience from the spiritual realm is something that happens here every day and we get almost a little blasé about it. You know, you see people walking and persons to be healed from cancer to blindness, that it's absolutely possible. My name is Henry Chong. And um, before I came here in Abhijanya, I was an energy policy analyst at Stanford University in California. About four years ago, I got diagnosed with atypical brain seizures. And they were serious enough that I had to terminate my uh, employment and look for healing. These shocks were happening so frequently that the doctors were afraid that it might cause uh, brain damage over time. So with that, I started a journey of, of finding healing. I first tried the regular Western medical route because both my parents are medical doctors. We went to see all of the battery of specialists that would normally be called for. After taking those for about a year and not um, experiencing any improvement, I decided to travel the world, literally, to find special people, healers maybe, that could help me with this condition. So I've been to Indonesia, Singapore, Spain, Peru, and ultimately here in Brazil. Everyone who comes is healed. Physically, it's when their time is due to heal. And they can control that. But spiritually, everyone gets a spiritual healing if they come just for one session of the casa. When you make the decision to come to the casa, you're actually saying to the entities, the spirits of light, I need your help. 
And when you come, the minute you buy your ticket to get on the airplane to come here, they are working with you. I thought that maybe the NTs could help me in, in six months, seven months. The NTs had told me that it would take a long time, but I had no idea I would have to stay here for three years. And I would certainly have no idea that I would actually have to stay within the confines of Abidjanje, or more specifically within this part of Abidjanje. There is an energetic safety zone, one kilometers in that direction, and maybe 500 meters left and right. And in that zone, I can move safely. Outside of that zone, the seizures immediately start. It's a very physical proof of the power of what is happening here to me. It's also frustrating, because I know what a goldfish feels like now in its bowl. But I'm very grateful that I found this place and that this place exists in which I can continue to work on my healing. Bonjour, c'est avec plaisir que je veux faire partager mon expérience de cette opération que j'ai eue le 27, Hello. Le jeudi 27 septembre. It is a pleasure for me to share my experiences with you. My operation took place on the 27th of September. The day before, I had asked John of God to grant me an operation on my eyes because they were becoming weaker and weaker. As the operation began, I experienced the entity's infinite softness. I thought, this is not an anesthetic. I can see the knife. What will happen to me? And the entity began to scrape. It was a little unpleasant, but it didn't hurt. I thought, I am in God's hands, and he will protect me. I was able to relax completely, and then it was over. I was filled with love and gentleness. I feel loved by God. And that is very important. If you believe, you will no longer suffer. I see the photographs, the paintings of the entities, and I try not to concern myself with who they are. So what? I think it's wasted energy for me to concern myself with who the entity was because I believe and I understand that an entity can say he's God if he wants to. He can tell you anything. So I'd rather just not concern myself with who he is only with what he's doing. My concern with the entities here, as long as I feel that they are doing something that is good for mankind, I want to be a part of it. But if it ever looks as though it's not, I don't want to be a part of it. That's the only reason I would ever leave the Chasm, is I could see or have some specific reason to believe that this is not a good thing. In the name of God. His whole life has been dedicated to helping others. A lady that came here, they had cancer throughout their whole body. And the entity looked at them, if you're ready to lose a part of your body, we can work on you. So what they did was, they actually made all the cancer in this person's body go into their little finger. And the entity then cut off their little finger, and the little finger is in the, in the jar here in the casa. And that person was cured, cured of cancer. So 
you cannot exp you cannot say, oh, this is how the entities do this. This is how spirits heal because it's way beyond our understanding. So the entities are more interested in the healing of your soul rather than in the healing of your physical body. Because to them, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience rather than having physical beings having a spiritual experience. So they are much more concerned with the trajectory of our soul throughout its different lifetimes. Because the way the entities see us and how they can size us up in like the second or two seconds that you are in front of the entity is that they see our energy field and within that energy field they see past lives, present lives, the most probable future lives. I have had arthritis for the last nine years and I was told that I would need a double hip replacement. I also have Crohn's disease for the last four years. The entity told me uh, that I must come for an operation at two o'clock. So later in the afternoon I took the line again and the same thing happened. I was brought straight up. It all happened so fast. And as I walked up, I could see it was the same entity and he was smiling at me again. I was really happy to see him. And I smiled the whole way up. I walked up with my crutches and he said to me, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, Father. And he said to me, he would take my crutches. I gave them to him. He took the crutches away and he told me that I didn't need them anymore. And I said, thank you, Father. And I went over to the left side and uh, sat in his current for a few minutes. I felt a lot of energy. I could sense light. And then I felt pain, a sharp pain on my left side. And I was prepared for more pain, but it didn't come. It only lasted a few minutes. I also got pain in my left knee. And then it seemed uh, just a few minutes more and I was outside again in the sunshine. And uh, I felt really, really happy. I had a little cry and I said thank you and that was it. I was given this for disabled parking and now I know I don't need it anymore. But I think I will keep it because I will get free parking when I need it. I've seen people who have been in wheelchairs for 30 years get up and walk simply after being told by the entity to say get up and walk or even run and they are urged to run back and forth. I've seen that many times. There are thousands of pictures that are handed to the entity to get a diagnosis for the pictures. So there are people who can't physically be here for healing, and those people who can't be physically here, they mail pictures through others. When these pictures are presented to the entity, 
the entity makes a diagnosis whether they need to come here for an operation, whether they need to come here for a healing, they may give a prescription. The entity pulls mediums out of current, gives these pictures to random mediums and says, you will be a surrogate. So that means you will receive a procedure, an operation through your body to that person. So it, there are people who benefit from all across the world who don't necessarily have to be here. Ich bin Arzt und war viele Jahre als Chefarzt an I am an internist and was head of department in an Austrian hospital for many years. Five years ago, I had an operation to remove a cancerous growth from the large intestine. A year and a half ago, it was clear that the malignant growth had returned and a peritoneal metastasis was diagnosed. The prognosis was bad and a cure seemed unlikely. After an operation lasting several hours, I received chemotherapy, which didn't agree with me at first. As a doctor and patient, the elongation of this illness seriously worried me, and I began to search for alternative methods which promised a cure. At this time, my wife and I heard about a spiritual center in Brazil where people with malignant illnesses could be healed. The first step was to send a photo of me to Abhijanya. From this moment on, my state of health improved rapidly to an extent that both my doctors and I were extremely surprised. This also had the effect that I began to be able to tolerate the chemotherapy. I'm convinced that so-called energetic operations were performed on me in Brazil. Operations without physical intrusion, without scars on the outside. After my return to Austria, my surgeon performed a colonoscopy and saw changes as if I'd undergone a prolonged laser surgery. It looked as if there'd been deep incisions in the intestinal mucosa. According to his own statement, he had not performed this surgery. My doctor and I have come to the conclusion that my life expectancy would be considerably less if I had not made these trips to Brazil. As a result of this atypical positive development, fears concerning my future have completely disappeared. One of the more remarkable stories that I could share with you is the story of a man that I did, a, a friend of mine that I did a surrogate surgery for in Germany. He was in hospital. He had sent his picture to me asking for a surrogate surgery by the entities here. And I went in front of the entity. The entity gave permission for me to do a surrogate surgery for him. The next day he had his uh, ultrasounds done and the ultrasounds actually showed him to have internal stitches inside his body but there was nothing on the outside. The doctors were all around his, gathered around his bed asking him, where have you had your surgery? Uh, and he said, well ask the nurses, I've been here all the time, I've been in the hospital. I would like to add that I did not only have cancer, but also a degenerative disease of the retina, a so-called macular degeneration, which had considerably impaired my sight. My sight is now significantly better, and this is even more extraordinary, because there is no cure for this illness in Western medicine. To sum up, 
I would like to emphasize that I have no doubts as to the value of progress and findings in Western medicine. I have devoted my life to this medicine and believe that I have helped many people with and through it. I am convinced that it makes sense to make use of these spiritual, energetic procedures and to give people the hope that healing is still possible with the help of these energies. The physical operations, the entities have communicated that many times, are for non-believers, for people who need to see something taken out. But the deep work that's being done on a karmic level, removing and healing your debts from the past, removing certain ailments that can come in the future, this is all connected with spirit. Over the years, I've learned that it is true. Our being is far greater than we can imagine. And it extends further than we can imagine. It's all a part of the universe because our being is not this physical body. It's an energy. And this energy goes beyond all time, all space, and all substance. What is happening here at the Casa, in the work of John of God, is profound and powerful. But the phenomena that are being witnessed here are not in isolation. We now have scientific studies that confirm that prayer works for healing, even when the person being prayed for does not know they're being prayed for. We have scientific studies that a prayer expressed over water changes its molecular structure. There's data. These are data points that cannot be reduced to the science we have today, to our paradigm today. Scientists at the end of the 19th century were bemoaning the fact that all the major scientific discoveries had already been made. And what was the future of science without more scientific discoveries? We should not fall into that same trap. It was just 20 years later that Einstein showed the world that time and space are not as we thought they were. What else is not as we think it is? We are all entities. The part that is alive in us is alive much as the entities here are alive. The only difference between the entities and us is that we are incorporated meaning we have a physical body. So I would say an entity is the, is the spirit, is the spiritual part of us, the bigger part of us, that is not incorporated. And those are the beings that Medium Joao is blessed with to actually bring through on this dimension, in this plane. The entities don't live in a different place, but they do live in a different dimension and the dimensions are all intertwined. For people who can see these entities and energies in general, they see the current rooms and the operation rooms of the casa as being full of thousands and thousands of beings that are operating. Each individual person has a team around them, a medical team with doctors and nurses, that can be up to the 10 or 20 people around them. And this is what's happening when you have received a, a spiritual intervention, what they say here, or a surgery, as the Brazilians call it. Being in this environment where there are many invisible beings around us who can read our thoughts they know our innermost thoughts. They know everything that there is about us, where we are from, where we've been in other lives. 
And so they knew that I was ready to do this work. Because you're able to remove negative energy. And then after a period of time, they put me in a chair. And that's where I stay now because it is not necessary for me to move to rooms. I can direct my energy, God's energy, not my energy, to any room, any city, any planet, any place that exists can be directed from any location. How is it possible to heal so many illnesses and to carry out hundreds of indiscernible operations at the same time? Como que Deus ele dá a vida, ele tem o poder de curar. É igual às pessoas que têm um curso superior de o que é médico. God is the creator of everything, the source and the strength. With his power, everything is possible, without restrictions. I have doctors and medicine around me to heal with this mission. And all the questions as to how it is possible to heal so many people can only be answered with God's strength. The entities, they utilize Medium Joao as a vessel, and they utilize all the mediums in the casa as vessels to channel the energy. So the mediums who are in the casa, they really fulfill a very important role. And their role is to generate like a current, a vibration, so that it's elevated. We're the main generators. A full trance medium is what medium Joao is. Em nome de Deus, os filhos estão operados. Everyone is a medium, but not everyone channels a spiritual being. We do, but we don't know we're doing it. <laughs> So people ask me here what it means to do your own part. The entities cannot do all the work for you. What the entities are trying to do is to bring your awareness to the times in your life where you've made decisions that are not necessarily in accordance with the path that you have chosen when you came into this life, or what is, I mean, you could say what would be God's will for your life. The entities do that in a very gentle way. They bring you back to the kind of decision you made and they invite you to make a diff simply a different decision. But for the people who are um, experiencing this kind of release work, which is very emotional, um, more often than not, this process is very difficult. It's very scary and frightening because a lot of fear a lot of emotion comes up and people don't want to engage and people want to push it away or run away from it. And this is very, for people who are trained in psychology and psychiatry, this is very um, normal behavior. And trauma therapists emphasize the importance of staying present to your pain. Many of us are not coming here for physical reasons. We come to understand how our spirit functions. We leave and feeling like we need to make transformations in our life. That we need to make conscious choices. We leave feeling more understanding about love, a deeper awareness about kindness, these natural human tendencies that we tend to forget. I came here out of sheer curiosity and wanting to find out more about life and what it means to be alive. That's basically it and that question took me all over Europe and 
I didn't find it there because I was looking outside. So my experience here is really finding the answers to everything I wanted to know inside by just sitting still, not going anywhere, by not saying anything, by not listening to anybody else, but just closing my eyes and going inside. And that's, it's, I guarantee if you do it for long enough, you'll find out how amazing you are, how beautiful you are, everybody. I'm Tony Bonnet from Houston, Texas, and this is the anniversary of my sixth year coming here. I came because I had HIV starting in 1984. My face was a skeleton, other parts of my body a skeleton, and then other parts the fat redistributed and it was growing humps. I had humps on my back, my stomach was extended, and then again the other parts, my arms, my face, it looked like a skeleton. On the first trip, of course, I expected to be healed immediately, and the entity told me come back five more times, and was put in the infirmary, laying on the bed. Uh, so things were a little bit worse than I had thought, perhaps. And that went on, not just that trip, but other trips as well. Laying on the bed, laying on the bed. And one trip I thought, I'm better, I feel better, I know, I look better, something has changed. And I went before the entity and he said, serious, get on the bed. Some people come here and get healed immediately. I've seen a lot of that. And it frustrated me to no end to think, my goodness, What's going on? I've been here, I've been here, I've done it, I've done it. There's nothing else to do. Why not me? Whatever he does there, and he's, I mean, he puts that thing in, it's very long, and he turns it and turns it. It looks strange, but I know that whatever he's doing when he puts his hand on you has to do with the energy that he's putting into your body or taking from your body. It all has to do with energy because what we do here is energy work, light work. It's all to do with energy because that's what we are energy. Negative entities are all over. It's not a negative energy. It's what they do with the energy. They do negative things. People do negative things. They create negative things. Watch some of the horror movies. You can see how people can create negative things with negative thoughts. The moment the negativity starts, you start thinking it. If you don't want that energy around you, you have to make sure that you don't allow it by latching on to the negative ideas that they bring to you. I'm saying that they bring to you for you to take a different attitude on your thoughts thinking. When you think that you're thinking, do you hear a voice? It's your voice, of course. It's not going to use someone else's voice. It's using your voice, telling you a, a negative story or telling you you should do something. You don't have to accept it. The only way that I know that you can really get rid of it is use some kind of prayer to move it away. I don't want it. I don't want any negativity around me or in my life. And a lot of people don't know what is negative. They've been doing it for so many years, they think that killing someone or thinking of killing someone or telling a lie on someone or stealing or robbing is negative. 
for you can think negative and create negativity. This is a tremendous amount of responsibility for yourself because what you focus on creates you. I'm none of those things. I'm the one who watches those things happen. The watcher, the eye that never shuts. This is who you really are and who I really am. It's the same thing. Every thought that I have and every feeling that I have is not actually who I am. The watcher, this is who you are and that is what we have the opportunity to realize here. Joao Teixeira de Faria. I can't say enough about him because he's such a wonderful person. Many people do negative things to him and have to come back to him. And he lives by God's rule. He doesn't judge. He helps. When they come back, he helps them. Regardless of what they've said about him, what they've done to him, he helps them. I wanted things to happen my way. And you go through the game of, I can make this make sense. I can do it, whatever it takes. I can read the books, take the classes, do the exercises, hear the speakers, come to Brazil, sit in meditation. Everything that one could do on the list, I was doing. And it didn't seem to make any difference. And it got frustrating and scary because everything I was doing that I knew I was supposed to do wasn't doing anything. And in retrospect, it was a diminishing of the ego. But everything was taken away. Everything was being taken away. Every belief, every class, every meditation technique, every new age idea, it was all being taken away. And didn't understand why, couldn't understand why. And of course, that was the process of being given a gift more magnificent than I could ever imagine. So is there hope? <laughs> yes. Yes. Especially when we think there isn't or when we have to have it a certain way. The gift is letting that go and the universe will take that pain and suffering away and give something more incredible than we ever knew existed. So instead of just wanting to get rid of the AIDS, which was a big deal and was, that was the thing for a long time. But the nice thing is, knowing that the reason for the AIDS is gone. This place gives the greatest gift that one could ever imagine. And that's the gift of seeing God in everything. You have to go back into your own personal history to look back at all the different times in which 
maybe you have diverted from you know source or god or whatever you may call it but that has caused you to lose the connection with the source of all energy of all creation and ultimately that's where all disease comes from The more open your heart is and the more open your mind is, that is where it all takes place. You have to be very open to this. You can't have any fraction of doubt because the more doubt you put in, the more darkness you're putting against your healing and the more doubt you're putting against God's will. You've heard like asking you shall receive and if you ask with an open heart and an open mind, in time you will receive, you will get your blessing. When you're told to just sit and be quiet and do nothing, you have the opportunity to go on this investigation inside, which is better than any travel that you'll do in the world. And if you come here because you're sick, it's because your soul is telling you to wake up and life will gently give you invitations to wake up all through your life. Becoming seriously ill is like having cold water thrown all over you and you're really told to wake up. And this is difficult, but it's the greatest opportunity to find out who you really are. Now is the time for us to start working on our individual innermost attitudes, being non-judgmental, being patient, being humble, giving gratitude to God. People don't give enough gratitude to God. If you are paralyzed and you can't walk, but you're still alive, if you're grateful for being alive, thank God that you're grateful that you are alive and that there's a chance that you might walk again. Just say, thank you, God. Hello, ich bin die Müller Sarah. Hello. My name is Sarah Müller. I'm 23 years old, come from Austria, and I'm now here with John of God. The first time I came here was in 2006 because I was suffering from very heavy epilepsy and we all had no idea how to cope with it. Then we received a sign from God which brought me here and for which I am very grateful. And then I was standing in front of the entity who said to me in reply to my question, can you help me to become healthy again? Yes, we will help you. In der Zeit war ich insgesamt viermal hier innerhalb von. I was here four times within a period of six months until I was healed on the 22nd of March 2007. It was a Wednesday, and I had just arrived from Austria. On the afternoon of my arrival, I went straight to the casa and asked the entity, what are the next steps for me? And he replied, you are already healed. That was the most beautiful moment of my life. Und ich bin wirklich sehr sehr dankbar, 
dass Gott mir diesen And I am so very grateful that God showed me this way to this wonderful place. Und dass ich jetzt And that I am now able to live a normal, healthy life. Que Deus cura, Deus é caminho. I send a lot of light to all people around the world who believe in love, in peace, in nature and in harmony. God is our Father and we must believe and trust in Him. God is healing and the medicine. I would invite you and everyone who watches this film to please Try, and not just try to do it. Start loving one another. Start in your home with your children, your family members, your friends, your neighbors, strangers. We are not strangers. We're all in human bodies. We're all a part of the same being. Love one another. the secret is the key that we all need on earth. It's wonderful. And that's all we need to do now is love one another.